Let us first discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Hindu scriptures. The Hindu scriptures can be broadly divided into two categories, the Shrutis and the Smritis. Shruti means that which is revealed, which is understood, which is heard. The Shruti, according to the Hindu scholars, is considered to be the word of God. And they are divided into two parts, the Ved and the Upanishads. The Sanskrit word Ved is derived from the word Vid, which means knowledge par excellence. And there are four types of Vedas, Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved, and Atharva Ved. Though exactly when did these Vedas come into existence is not known. But according to Swami Dayanand Saraswati, who is the founder of the Arya Samaj, he says that the Vedas are 1,310 million years old. But the majority of the Hindu scholars, they say that the Vedas are approximately 4,000 years old. In which part of the world did it first come is not known. Who was the person to whom it was first given is not known. In spite of all these ambiguities, it is yet considered to be the word of God, and it is the most authentic and the most high scriptures amongst all the Hindu scriptures. The next in authority are the Upanishads, derived from the Sanskrit word upa, which means near, ni matlab down, shad matlab sit, sitting down near. When the pupils and students sat next to the teacher to acquire knowledge, it's called the Upanishad, which means knowledge which removes ignorance. There are more than 200 Upanishads, but the Indian culture gives a figure of 108, out of which some are picked up as the principal Upanishads. Some have picked up 10, some 12. Sri Radha Krishnan has picked up 18 and written a book, the principal Upanishads. The next type of scriptures are the Smritis. Smriti means that which is remembered. It means memory. The Hindu scholars say Smritis are scriptures written by human beings, by rishis. And they are next after the Shruti. The Shrutis are higher than the Smritis. They are also called as Dharma Shastra because they tell how a life should be led by an individual, by the community, and by the society. One of the most important Smriti is the Purana. Purana means ancient. It talks about the stories of deities, about the creation of the universe, about literature. And Maharishi Vyas has compiled the Puranas into 18 voluminous parts. One of the most important Puranas is called as the Bhavishya Purana. Bhavishya means future. This Purana speaks about the future. And it's mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khan 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8. A Malaysia will come along with his companions from the desert, and his name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Raja Bhoj will give this Mahadev Arab a bath in the Panch Garf and will welcome him with honor and address him with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind, you have created a great force to fight against the evil people. This prophecy of Bhavishya Purana Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8, it says that a Malachya will come. Malachya in Sanskrit means a foreigner. He will come along with his companions talking about the Sahabas. From a Marusthal. Marusthal in Sanskrit means a sandy track or a desert. His name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him. Raja Bhoj will address this Mahadev Arab with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind, we know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a pride of humankind. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Kalam, chapter number 68, verse number 4, Verily thou art standeth on the highest standard of character. Allah says in Surah Ahzab, 
chapter number 33, verse number 21. Verily in the Prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, you will find a very beautiful pattern of conduct. He further says that he will collect a great force to fight against the evil people. And we know that was done by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Some people may say that the Raja Bhoj mentioned in this prophecy was present in the 11th century, 500 years after Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and was the descendant of the 10th generation of Raja Shilavahan. These people, they failed to realize that like the monarchs of Egypt, they were given the title pharaohs. There were many pharaohs. There was not one pharaoh. Like the kings of Rome were called as Caesars. There was not one Caesar, there were many Caesars. Similarly, the kings of India were given the title Bhoj. So there was not one Raja Bhoj, there were many Raja Bhoj. So this Raja Bhoj is not the one they're talking about in the 11th century. It is much earlier before than the 11th century. Further, it's mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khand 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 10 to 27. The land of the Malichas has been spoiled. There was an enemy who was killed earlier. Now he's been sent by a more powerful enemy. I will send a man by the name Muhammad, peace be upon him, to guide these people to the straight path. O oh, Raja Bhoj, you need not go to the land of the Pishachas, because I, through my kindness, will purify you where you are. Then a man with an angelic disposition comes to Raja and tells him that Arya Dharm will prevail in this world. I have been sent by Ishwar Paramatma. My follower shall be circumcised, who doesn't have a tail on the head, who will grow a beard, who will create a revolution, who will give the call for prayer. He will eat all lawful things. He will eat all sorts of animals, but will not eat the flesh of swine. He will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. He will be called as Musalman. This prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says that my follower shall be a person who is circumcised. And we know the Muslims are circumcised. He will not have a tail on the head. That's a shindi or a chutki. He will grow a beard. He will create a revolution. He will give the call for prayer. That's talking about the adhan, like the Muslims give. He will eat all lawful things. He will eat all sorts of animal, but will not eat the flesh of swine. And Allah says in the Quran in no less than four different places. In Surah Bakra, chapter number 2, verse number 173. Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 3. Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 145. And Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 115. Hurrimat alaykumul maitu tu waddamu walahmul khinzeer. Wa ma ahuilla ali gairil labi. Forbrin for you for food are dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah's name is taken. So because the Quran says in no less than four different places that flesh of swine is prohibited, we Muslims don't eat pork. The prophecy further says they will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. And they will be called as Musalman. This prophecy clearly indicates about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khan 1, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 21 to 23, it says that the seven sacred cities of Kashi have been filled with corruption and rakshas. In the land of the Malichya, the followers of the Malichya Dharm are good people. All good qualities are found in them. And in this country, we find all sorts of vices. O Rishi, glorify the name of the Lord. Here too, it is talking about Prophet Muhammad and his followers.